All right, and welcome to Veg 23. Guess what? It's rant time. So something that really annoys me is when I go onto either Facebook or YouTube and I see a comment like this. Yeah, well, Muhammad is a pedophile. <laughs> yeah, really sucks. And the thing that annoys me is that this claim is invalidated by the simplest of historical context. And that's why it probably annoys me more than any other Islamic misconception. It has nothing to do with morality, nothing to do with the ambiguousness of right or wrong, black or white, good or bad. It's simple, historic, contextual fact. So my three points today are going to be historical context, what is a paedophile, and tradition versus religion. Let me open this point with some clips from the BBC comedy series, The Black Adder, series one with the popular Black Adder franchise. In the episode, The Queen of Spain's Beard, Black Adder is desperately trying to avoid being forced into a political marriage with an unattractive Spanish infanta. Hmm, forced marriage, why does that seem familiar? I'll come back to that later. Luckily for him, Spain allies itself with France. This means that Black Adder now has to have a political marriage with the Princess of Hungary who is eight. The episode ends with Blackadder essentially spending his wedding night babysitting his new bride, reading her a bedtime story and fetching her glasses of water. So what's the point of this? The point is that in the West, in Europe, this very continent, child marriages were being conducted until at least the 18th century, like you know, until at least 200 years ago. The rich people marrying off their daughters for political gain, or the poor underclass, having to marry off daughters because you know, they have no resources to feed that many mouths. So the point is, this was a global norm. You know, people matured, especially women, at a much younger age 20 centuries ago. Simply put, you considered a mature adult the second you reach puberty, be it as young as 14 or even 9. At that age, you considered as mature an adult as you would be considered at 18 years old in a modern society. But you know, while we're on a subject of age, we don't actually know what age I Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, actually was. It could have been nine, which is a popular stance all of these, you know, the critics of Islam have, but there were no birth certificates in those days, no way of keeping record of when you were born. She could very easily just have been 19. She could have been any age, from 19 to 9. Well, she was at any age. We don't know. That's a thing. And frankly put, as one of the leading uh, um, supporters of women's rights in the first in the first century Saudi Arabia and the first century Middle East, very unlikely that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would be a paedophile. Now, I'm using paedophilia here erroneously. I'm using it the same way that the uh, critics are using it in to describe someone who's a perpetrator of child sexual abuse as opposed to what the term actually means which is a uh, it's actually the, the uh, name for a mental uh, con psychological condition a medical condition now i think one of the points that i've given that whatever age uh, aisha may allah be pleased with her uh, actually was she was at time of age in the historical context considered a mature adult capable of giving consent uh, for marriage, therefore invalidating any claim that the Prophet was a paedophile. And in Islam, for a marriage to be valid, consent has to be given from both the man, the woman, and the parents. Mutual consent. If anyone of those four parties does not agree with the marriage, it is not, val it is not a valid a marriage under Islam, despite what uh, certain misconceptions about uh, Islam might be. So I feel I've already you know, disproven this whole claim, but in case you're not completely convinced, here are some supplementary historical context on paedophilia. Prior to the 1970s, child sexual abuse wasn't a public conscious due to the secretive and unspeakable nature of it, although no doubt it probably happened in one form or another. But what would have been considered abuse by the public, by the victim and by the a potential abuser would be completely different to what we consider abuse in modern day and age. Now, obviously, 
rape that is unconsensual sex with a child or otherwise at any point in history would be considered sexual abuse and a horrendous crime. Don't get me wrong. The really difference would be what statutory rape is. That is, you know, having sex with someone consensually, but the person you're having sex with is below the age of consent. And the age of consent is the it is the point of uh, uh, contention, and even that is today a point of contention. Here in Britain, age of consent is 16. In America, it's 17. In other parts of the world, it'll be completely different. You know, probably some as low as puberty. Islamically, you are considered an adult the moment you reach, reach uh, puberty. That is when you are considered mature. Be about nine, uh, which is the uh, normal. What well, is normal? The average age for a girl to reach puberty, or 16, which is the average age for a boy to reach puberty. Although, of course, Islam prohibits uh, premarital relationships, so you'd have to get married first. Obviously. Another interesting fact is child pornography. Now, that doesn't really have any direct relation to this topic, but I'll give some facts on it, just for some historical context. Charles Ludwig Dogson. Now, that name might not be exactly familiar to you, but you probably know who I'm talking about. And you probably know him better by listening. Lewis Carroll. Now, that still doesn't ring a bell, then he is the author of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and the sequels of that through Looking Glass, as well as many other things such as the Jabberwocky. One thing Lewis Carroll loved in his spare time was take photographs of naked, prepubescent girls. Now, at this point in time, this was considered sexual abuse because no one, especially including the models, would have felt this was abuse. They wouldn't have felt abused. They would not have come, you know, they would not have had any negative effect from this. They wouldn't have PTSD or depression. They, they would have found, they would, you know, enjoy modeling as much as the photographer enjoyed photographing. It was it's just like, you know, you get uh, modern models presumably having photographs taken of them naked today. The fact that they were underage was completely uh, not an issue in that day and age. Now don't misunderstand me, I understand that today in this day and age, age, it definitely is wrong and I full heartedly agree with that. But the reason it's wrong today and not then is that while then it was to be innocent, people just did, you know, it was normal. Nowadays it's used for more malicious reasons such as sexual abuse and, you know, blackmail, stuff like that. And most certainly taking photographs of pre uh, girls today would most definitely be considered wrong, of course. But the most annoying thing about this whole issue is it has nothing to do with Islam. Child marriages, as I've mentioned earlier, were a global norm. So people who think they're attacking Islam by attacking this issue are really misinformed. Child marriages is not Islam, it's just how things were. They happened long before the Prophet was born. To be honest, most of the things people have criticised Islam for are actually Islam. More often not, rather Arabic or Asian traditions that have either come along later and people are just confused with Islam. You know, even Muslims are confused with Islam. An example of this is forced marriage. Forced marriages aren't Islam. They're actually explicitly forbidden in Islam. Consent for marriage, as I mentioned above, has to be from the man, woman and the parents. You know, the woman, if the woman doesn't want to do the marriage, there is no marriage. If it happens, it's condemned in the eyes of Islam. Islam, unlike most societies in that day and age, considered marriage not to be a status, but a mutually consented contract between a man and a woman. And in this mutually accepted contract, men had rights to expect from their wives, and wives had rights to expect from their husbands. So yeah, that was my massive rant, because this issue really infuriates me, because it's, it just makes no sense. So yeah, hopefully I've cleared some stuff up for people here. If I made any mistakes, do on my own fallacy as a human being, and you know, ensure that I haven't made any mistakes, but I have, that's my own fallacy as a human being. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm not a scholar, and I just want to you know, make it clear, I'm not a scholar of Islam, so I don't have intricate knowledge, but I mean, if you ask them below, I, I'll either point you in a link direct you to what, a, a legit source or you know show you how you can get uh, proper information. Uh, if you want to debate historical context with me I'm probably better versed at that but it's, the facts are clear. So yeah, switch it up.